not the preacher in, in my family, Gideon is. He, he always called me his pastor. And I know that he would be beaming with pride seeing me here. I don't have much to say. But I want to start by reading from John 11. John 11. Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was at Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore the sister sent to him saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, Lately the Jews sought to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks in the night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. These things he said, and after that he said to them, Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him up. Then his disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. However, Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought that he was speaking about taking rest and sleep. Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and I am glad for your sakes that I was not there, that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. So when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away. And many of the Jews had joined the women around Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Now Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary was still sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been there, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at that last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who has come into this world. And when she had said these things, she went her way and frequently called Mary, her sister, saying, The teacher has come and is calling for you. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the town, but was in the place where Martha met him. Then the Jews who were with her in the house and comforting her, when they saw that Mary rose up quickly and went out, followed her, saying, She is going to the tomb to weep there. Then when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who were with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him? And some of them said, Could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again, again groaning in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. 
Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you always hear me. But because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Now when he had said these things, he, came, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he had died, and he who had died came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Loose him and let him go. Today I stand before you, church, and World Trumpet Mission, and I ask you, where is your faith? Where is your faith? I know Gideon would Ma ask you the same question. Church, you have to arise. Kanisa, mulino gorokoka. You have to wake up from your slumber. Death has lost its sting. In, in John 10:10, 10, 10, it says, "The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy." I have come that they may have life, and that they may have it more abundantly. Jesus said, "He is the resurrection and the life." It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing, but it is the Spirit who gives life. I know the Lord did not bring me this far. To take Gideon from me. As Esther in the Bible was told. Maybe for such a time as this. I believe that for such a time as this, I am here. I want to read. A message that was sent to me this morning. Today when I woke up, I was in despair. And I asked the Lord, where are you? But, but something came to me. And no, Rachel. I felt the Lord saying, there is so much just unity in the church. There is so much unbelief. The church needs to rise up and stand together in, in one faith with no doubting. And as I felt that, somebody in Israel sent me this message. And young boy of 11 years 
He was at the altar praying. And he was quickened in his spirit. He saw Gideon's spirit in heaven. And the Lord was telling him that Gideon had not yet finished his assignment. And the Lord was willing to send him back. The young boy saw an angel restoring him. The Lord also told him that Gideon was attacked because he is an intercessor and that the devil is attacking intercessors especially WTN ministry. This young boy has never seen or met Gideon. But the Lord revealed this to him. And this person who sent it to me said, while praying this morning, I heard in my spirit that if we all agree in prayer and avoid all negative messages, God is willing to restore Gideon back. And But that what is hindering is that some believers have already surrendered him. And yet God wants us to have one voice. So church, let us not give up. And this person felt a question within him. Is there anybody with faith big enough like a mustard seed to believe Gideon's resurrection and Gideon is a revival carrier he his burden the burden that was on his heart that the Lord gave him he was, he was praying fervently for revival. Praying for revival in our lives, in the ministry, in the churches, in the nation, and for the generations to come. That was his heart's cry. Gideon prayed with me. We prayed together for revival. I know that the Lord did not place this burden of revival on his heart and not see it fulfilled. Gideon will bring revival. The Lord will bring revival through Gideon. For this generation and for the generations to come. We do not fight against flesh and blood. But it's against principalities and powers. Against the evil. That's in this world. So stand and believe together with me. In one faith. That Gideon shall come forth. He shall rise. He shall wake up from his slumber. The Lord is willing to send him back. He's just asking, will you believe? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise Jesus. I am Angel Molinde, now Mrs. Musoke. I am Angel Molinde, now Mrs. Musoke. And um, we've been believing together with faith. 
And for me, I want to praise I kept asking God give me a direction give me something you lead me into your prayer give me what to say and I will say it and then I started to remember what I was always told when I was growing up that the, when you are praying it is always best to pray in scripture. And so I started to ask myself, Lord, give me something. I just started reading randomly and just, Lord, give me something. And the Lord, uh, I landed on Isaiah 43. Uh, verse 26. Say, so make your case against me. 